In today's show, we're gonna get started creating your first custom app in Microsoft Teams. And we're gonna do that using Power Apps. So in this quick video, I'm gonna do a five minutes to build your first app. And then after you build that first app, I'm gonna use a couple more minutes to kind of get you excited about other future things you should do. Should be fun, should be fast. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys, and I am super excited to be the one to help you create your first custom app inside of Microsoft Teams. And we're gonna do that using Power Apps and this new stuff that's in preview called Project Oakdale. So I'm guessing you probably heard about it at night or all your friends, it's the buzz at the water cooler. And so what I wanna do here is just spend a few minutes with you to help you build that first app. And then once I've built that first app, kind of point you on a path of here's how you can build additional custom apps, here's how you make that app better, and just kind of get you guys really ingrained in this new ecosystem that just got opened up, and I am so fun and excited that it's here. So, with all that, let's just switch over to my desktop, let's take a look and have some fun. Okay, so over here on my desktop, what we've got is I just created a brand new Teams team, so that way I could start blank fresh with you guys. And the very first thing you need to do is add the Power Apps app. So I'm gonna go over here to the ellipses, we're not gonna add this Power Apps app, we want the preview one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in Power Apps, and as I type in Power down here, you can see Power Apps Preview right here. So I'm gonna click on that, and it's gonna add this for me. And so by adding this for me, it is then gonna show up over here on the left, and it's gonna open up all this functionality. Now real quick, what you might wanna do here is right click on this and pin, so you don't have to hunt it down later, because once you start building these, you're gonna to wanna to come back often. But so now that that is built, what I want you guys to do is I want you to go ahead and say create an app. Now you won't have a bunch of recent apps down here, but I built a lot of these in other tenants, you know, practicing for this. But so you guys are gonna have the big blue create an app button. So let's take advantage of that, say create an app. And then what you're gonna do is you have to select what team you want to do it. Because every team that you create an app in is like a self-contained world. So each team has its own apps, its own data sources, all of those fun things. So. To that end, I'm gonna go down here and I'm going to take advantage of the one called Build Your First App. So I selected that team, and so we're gonna say create. I don't have to choose a channel, just a team. Now you're gonna get this screen that's gonna say give us a minute, and so this screen is going to provision um, all of the infrastructure required. Because not only does this give you the ability to create apps, it also creates a really rich data source called Common Data Service. And so the Common Data Service is a light version of that, but it's underneath the hood, that's gonna let you store your data there, which might be a little bit different if you built an app before we've stored data in SharePoint or Excel or SQL. The common data service is the fastest data source going, and it's got a lot of other robust features that allow you and me non-developer non types, right? I've never written a line of C-sharp code in my life. Probably you haven't either, right? Us non-developer types, we're gonna take advantage of that data source. So I'll hit pause in the video while this finishes, but I'll be right back. And it was like the moment I hit pause, it, it binged up, said bing, I'm ready. And so then now it is getting things ready. So immediately what it does after it provisions that underlying database that you need access to is it's going to drop you into the studio so you can start building your app. And so this is getting the studio in place. It's also making sure all the infrastructure is there. But we're going to drop into this thing called the hero template. There's the hero template as we say it. And with the hero template, it's going to get you started. This is how I know I can build an app so fast with you guys. So the first thing you want to do is over here on the left, click on create a new table. Give your table any name you want. You probably want to make it something descriptive. And so typically with me, I use examples like my employees just because it's a fun little data set, but maybe you need to track stuff. Maybe it's inventory, maybe it's projects. You know, just think of this as the same way if you were going to go make a new spreadsheet over in Excel to track some data. That's the same thing you're going to do here. But instead of being in an Excel file, it's in a rich, powerful database under the hood. So I'm just gonna call it my employees to make my life easy. Another little pro tip here, always hit advanced settings. So here it just says, oh, portal table name, who cares, right? But always click on those advanced settings and look to see what's there so you know what you have the ability to do in the future. So now we'll hit say create. And this is gonna provision us a table and it gives us this fun little table editor where we can start going in here and be like, oh, well, I wanna, the very first thing I wanna track about my people is not their name, it's actually gonna be their title. So I can just hit a little drop down. Look at all these options. Oh, cool. Edit my column. And we're just gonna change this from that, from name to job title. Hit save. And just like that, we've got a, a, a column called job title. Notice a little red star, tell me that's a required column. No big deal. We'll add another one here. 
Maybe we want to add one for first name because I usually like to store these separately, right? So we got a first name column. We'll add another column here. We'll call last name. And then we'll do another one for, how about, uh, let's just do one for like higher date, right? So higher date. And then last but not least, we will choose, um, how about we'll do a uh, hourly wage. My employees love that I put their wages out here. And so then if you hit the drop down here, I just want to point out real quick that when you're choosing your different types of columns, you know, so I just chose a date. I went way too fast when I did that. But so hourly wage, do you want that to be a number? That's a whole number. So one, two, three, four, five. Or do you want it to be more like currency? So a dollar fifty-five, right? It's overpaid for Chewy, but whatever. So what we're going to do here is we'll go ahead and just choose a decimal number. And so all of these different types, so they just have a little bit of a different setting, kind of a little different behavior that goes with each one. All right, so we can create that one. But there you go. We've gotten some straightforward ones. So let's we'll do one more. We'll do my favorite color. I also like to track my people's favorite colors. And if this one, if we do like a choice, look at this. We get options. We need to be like red, new choice, blue, oh, and then another new choice, green, and create. So there you go. Now we have created a table just that quickly of the data we want to track, right? The same as you kind of would put your um, Excel columns. We're just choosing the data type as we go. And so then for the job title now, you know, I always start with our CEO. And that is my lovely wife, Nicola Young. Her hire date, I do not remember it, is like 12 one. We're just due the year we got married, right? Yeah, that's right. Remember your anniversary, folks. That's not my anniversary, but at least it's the right year. And she makes $99.99. And her favorite color can be yellow. How about that? We'll say a little. Oh, I didn't make yellow in this data set. Her favorite color can be green. And then just like that, we have not only provisioned it, but we've started to fill in the data. So I'm going to hit pause real quick. I'm going to add a couple more records just so we can see some data. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I just quickly jumped in there, typed in some different people from the team just so you can kind of see, you know, some of the people. And so we had some data. But that's it. We've done it. So now if you just hit the X, when you drop back over here, what we refer to as the hero template is going to customize everything for us. So over here on the left, it added what we call in Power Apps term a gallery, which is a control that lets us see all the data. And then here in the middle, it added a form. If we hit preview, then we want to see a little bit bigger, right? It's a small font. I realize that. And so now we can see, look, we have these different ones. We could be like, oh, you know what? I should probably have um, seen some different fields over here, right? I don't want to see that when it was created. That seems weird. So we'll hit the X. If we select on this control, and over here on the left, you might want to just click on this. But you can see that it's a browse gallery. Now on the right, we can actually control the fields. And so we could, oh, well, maybe we want to change the layout, right? We don't have an image today. So we'll say title, subtitle, and body. So that gives us three fields, job title. And then maybe here we'll throw in the first name. And then here we'll throw in people's favorite color. And so now if we preview, we have a little bit better data over here. Very nice. We can do the same thing over here. So right now, this is showing up in a one column view, even though it says three. We won't overthink it. Remember, we're still in preview. So we'll say 12. That gives us these kind of different sized columns that we can take advantage of. And we can say edit fields. And so if we want to see different columns, like for example, there's job title, first name, last name. So all of our columns came through. Perfect. Maybe we want to add that created one. We say add a field. Here's all of the fields that haven't been added. So you'd be like, hey, when was this create, uh, created on? So right there. And so then now we can see the created on. If we're like, oh, created on should be the very first field. We can kind of drag it up here to the top like this. And so now we've rearranged. That looks nice. We can also resize these. So if I want to make this created on, take the whole one. Maybe we want to make favorite color smaller. Now, if it starts to get weird like this, like you saw it just happen to me, Turn off this width fit right here. And so then now it gives you a little more flexibility on resizing these. So now I can kind of, oh, we got to turn off width fit for each one. So there we go. We'll do that one, that one. And then we'll do kind of like this. And we'll take this one and turn it off. And so then now we've got a little bit of a different size. So you get the idea. You control what goes there, right? So with that done, awesome. I think we're in good shape. So let's just take this, let's say publish to Teams. Now, if you want to rename it real quick, we could go up here and be like, let's call this 
my first app. We'll say save, we'll say publish to Teams, and then we'll do next. And so then now we need to choose the tabs. We're gonna say the little plus here. We're gonna say save and close. And so this is going to take it and make it available on the Teams channel. So everybody who has access to that team uh, will be able to see it. So if we switch over here to Teams, and in general, look, there it is, my first app. I didn't do it, it's just there. And if we click in here, we'll be able to see the app. And after a second, it loads up. Look at that, that looks awesome. And so we can come in here and be like, oh, you know what, Chewy's favorite color is not blue. Hit the edit pencil. Oh, Chewy's favorite color is green. Might even be an easier way to interact with your data than the little adder over there. New record, this will just make a new person, right? And this is um, me. We'll just put my name in here, right? You don't wanna see me type a bunch of stuff. And there we go. Now I'm down here on the bottom of the list. Very fast. We also have the ability to kind of come in here. So we edit it, we can delete. Oh yeah, are you sure? Yeah, I want to delete Shane. Now remember, there's no recycle bin. So if we delete it, it's gone. But there you go. Just like that, you have built a fully functional app in here. We got to select a user here. There we go. And so we have this full fidelity app that we can now take advantage of and see and do all these fun things. Awesome. All right, here, let me switch over though real quick and show you an example of what this can go if you put a little more elbow grease. You guys learn a little more, right? Because now that you've built your first app, you've published it, your team's using it, let's show you a little bit more about what you might do. All right, so this is an example I made earlier. You can see this is that same type of demo data, the same type of stuff, but I just went and customized it more. So this thing over here, this was a form control. So if you go search for Power Apps form control, there must be a thousand YouTube videos on how to customize them to look something like this. This is a gallery. I added an image column to store people's faces. I added a custom card. I also went ahead and integrated email so I could send an email from this card or message the employee and team, start a chat. There's also rich integration where we pull in like the team's channel, whether or not it's using um, dark mode, so it's like it's themes, the, the team IDs, all of that data is there. All of these new things for you guys to learn about. Well, not today. But those are the ideas that are gonna be in future content that's available to you. So this is one of the ways. The other thing that you guys could check out is if you go down here to, um, back in the build tab, right? So if we click on the power apps over here on the left, and then once it loads, if you scroll down a little bit, you can add, they've pre-built some custom apps, employees ideas, inspection, issue reporting. These are some really awesome apps that kind of give you an idea of like the real power of what you can build if you have, once you start spending some real time in here. And let me show you a demo of one of those real quick. So look at this, I loaded up the manage inspection. Look at how nice it looks. Look, we got rich images. We can come in here, we can check out different data. But in reality, this is all based on that same concept that you guys just built. This is just going a little bit further, right? We, but we've got some different uh, child datas. We've got different you know, inspection insights and inspection forms all of this rich capability. And remember, as part of the Power Platform, you integrate with about 400 different connectors. So you have the ability to talk to all types of data sources. So hopefully you're as excited about this as I am. You know, start playing around, checking this out. Now, if you look um, above, below, somewhere, I'll have a link to another video that walks you through. It's about a 40 minute video, but it is gonna walk you through in details. Instead of just quickly creating everything as fast as we could, like we did in this one, it's gonna explain all the different field types, how to get those faces in there, how to start to customize the forms to show different formulas, writing your first formulas, how to figure out even what a formula is. All of that is covered in the longer version of the video that you guys can check out um, from the link that I just showed. Also, if you have any um, questions about any of this, right, leave me comments below because this is the version for the preview, right? The preview just came out. It's going to evolve. As this thing goes through its life cycle, I'm gonna remake this video over and over again, and I'm, I'm happy to show different things. I have roughly 100 different Power Apps videos out there, so I promise, plenty more coming. Um, we're also gonna have a proper training class on this, and our first training class is gonna be free. So if you just go out to training.powerapps911.com, there'll be a link out there where you can sign up to get notified when that free training class launches. Or just subscribe to the YouTube channel. I've got hundreds of videos here for you to watch. All right? And I think with all that, I'm just going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So.
check them out. Thanks and have a great day.